Hi, Warhawk Defense. We're here today. It's uh, actually a very balmy, uh, almost spring afternoon. Uh, they say that the snow is coming in tonight and the cold temperatures. So we wanted to do a video uh, before it got too bad. Um, this is a Harrington and Richardson H&R um, uh, M1 Garand uh, 30 caliber military rifle. This one was manufactured in about 1955. H&R got the contract to do these guns uh, after uh, World War II. Uh, they needed more uh, rifles, obviously. A lot of them had been used during the war, and the Korean War was, uh, was underway. Uh, however, by the time that, uh, that these rifles, these H&R, uh, rifles were made, the Korean War, the armistice had already been signed, and uh, so by 1954, 55, and 56, when these rifles were made, uh, the Korean War was over. But they went uh, to the active duty forces anyway, and uh, they stayed in the active duty forces well into the 60s, uh, 1963 and some units, but by 1957, the uh, M14 had come into uh, acceptance. That was the main military battle rifle of the time. And these were relegated to uh, probably National Guard, second line service. And a lot of them were sent overseas to other countries. In fact, millions of them went overseas. Uh, there were just over four million M1 Garands made. Uh, the first ones were made and uh, hit, hit the uh, military began to receive them in 1937, and uh, they became the official military rifle in 1937, and uh, they, of course they stayed as the main military battle rifle through World War II, Korean War. Uh, some of them ended up in Vietnam as sniper, uh, sniper versions, but a very nice rifle. Uh, I'll show it to you. Um, hopefully you can, you can see this rifle. Um, this one, uh, as I say, is uh, got all the cartouches, the H&R cartouche here. There's a cartouche under here, and we'll do a close-up detail of all these cartouches. And uh, the wood's in pretty good shape. My guess is this one was probably uh, part of a military unit, and uh, when it was pulled out of service, it was then probably went to the civilian marksmanship program and probably somebody bought it from there I'm guessing but it is in very good condition and uh, and uh, we like it there's no uh, real bad wear on it of course this rifle never really saw battle since it was uh, made after World War II and after Korea so it's one of the last rifles made H&R uh, had the last uh, and also International Harvester had some of the last contracts to make these rifles so this if you if you think in terms of, um, you know, how new they are, this one is one of the latest ones made. Uh, this was probably made a year before they quit manufacturing them. This rifle uh, is one of the few uh, military rifles I've got that I'm actually older than this rifle. Uh, so this rifle was made after I was born, which uh, makes me feel kind of old, but um, not as old as the other uh, second World War rifles I've got which were, are at least 10 years older than me but anyway that's what this is now uh, this is a gas operated semi-automatic um, it fires eight rounds in a clip it's called an end block clip uh, this is what the clip looks like and uh, this is truly if you want to say the word clip this is what a clip is the rounds clip inside of there and then they drop into the rifle. And we'll show you how that works. Now when I open this rifle up, you're gonna hear the ping and it's gonna eject that clip. Ready, here we go. Okay, so when I pull the bolt back, the clip flings out and makes a ping. Now what also came out there is a snap cap we had in there that we're going to use to demonstrate some stuff with. Uh, so when now that this is empty, if I were in combat, I would take this clip, which uh, has eight 30-06 uh, caliber cartridges in it. 
I would put it right here. I would hold the release here with the side of my hand. I would push it in until it clicked and I'd let this go and it would charge around and we'd be ready to fire. We're not going to get to that point yet, however. I'm going to show you how this loads with this uh, dummy round. So here we go. All right, we've got we've got the the clip right here, which clips the eight rounds together. It's just a metal clip, literally clips them together. You put that in. If you're just going to load some single rounds, say you had a few rounds uh, left over, uh, you didn't have full eight. You could still load them by putting dropping them in. Once you put the clip in, you put it in. Now what we're going to do is hold this with the side of our hand. We're going to hold it, push it down with our thumb. You'll hear a click. There's the click. Now I'm going to let it go, and it loads. Now if that were a real round, I'd be ready to go down range on that target and fire off a round. All right, so that's the way we're going to do this. Here we go again. We're going to unload it so we can put some real rounds in it. There you go. Now during the war, I'm told, uh, my dad was in uh, the army at the end of World War II and through Korea, and I'm told that uh, when they fired, they had to use proper fire discipline because when the enemy heard that ping, of course, they didn't know you were out of ammo. So your buddies had to not fire in sequence with you. You had to be off sequence. So you'd go empty, he'd still have some rounds, you would reload, drop it in and there it sits you can see it dropped in the top again I'm going to put my hand on it I'm going to push them in till they click there's the click Oops. Nope. there we go didn't want to feed them but uh, I don't know last time this was fired probably a long time ago now it's got a safety right here we're going to put that safety on and that should allow if it does, this gun will not fire with that safety on, so we are now safe. Uh, we're going to put our hearing protection on now, and we're going to fire a few rounds downrange. Now this gun has a, an effective range of about three or 400 yards. It shoots a 30 6 caliber. Now that's a, pretty, uh, that's a pretty powerful round. That's a deer hunting round for sure. And that's a man stopper, and it's got good range and good knockdown. Now, what we use now in the military, the 5.56, is a 22 size bullet with a lot of velocity. This one is a 30 caliber bullet, uh, so it is a much larger caliber, or much larger bullet going down range with a much, uh, much more uh, velocity uh, and hitting power and distance. So this is a distance rifle. Of course, back in the day, World War II and that, the battle lines were, it wasn't house to house so much. Uh, it was long range. The enemy would be way over there on their side, uh, you know, and we'd be over here. And, and you needed a rifle that could shoot accurately at three or 400 yards. It's sighted right here. It's a peep sight. And hopefully you can see that. It's a peep sight. It's adjusted up and down, left and right, so windage elevation are adjusted here. On the front, it's just uh, a couple of ears to protect it, and the front post, which is just down inside of there. So we are going to sight this rifle. Now we're shooting really close here, just to give you an idea what it's like, because um, we're going to shoot one, uh, one clip because, well, because this isn't a range, and, will make a lot of people upset probably. Well, it is a range, it's just not a rifle range. So we'll do this for a demo. So we're gonna halt right here and put our ears on and then we're gonna shoot it. Here we go. The range is hot, we are going hot. Safety is off, we're gonna take a couple of shots. Here we go. That was loud. Try one more. All right. Move.
the camera. All right, here we go. A couple of more. All right, there we are, empty clip. You heard it eject. We're gonna take a look at the shots here. All right, there's the hits. You notice that some of them like right in there are in the same hole pretty much. I was so close, you really can't miss. But even at distance, they're pretty close. Um, well, you know, we weren't out that far, but it's sighted pretty well. Somebody has taken it and sighted it uh, before we got it, but uh, definitely a serious battle rifle. Uh, M1 Garand, 30-06 caliber, um, Harrington and Richardson, this one is H&R, uh, made in 1955, and um, sweet gun. It's in very good shape. Um, We'll do some close-ups of it. You should, if you want to buy one of these that's in any kind of good shape, um, you probably should expect to pay between five and seven, maybe eight hundred dollars. So, and here is Braden. This is Braden, our helper for today. He was helping us with the camera work. What do you think, Braden? Good. Nice gun. Mhm. Mm Would you buy one of these? Mm, yeah. Yeah. You think it's a cool gun? Yeah. And I got one and for Christmas. You got one for Christmas? Yep. Like that? It's at Grandma and Grandpa's house. Yeah, yeah. He actually got the BB gun. He got the Red Rider. And he's done a video, didn't you? You did a video on the Red Rider, didn't you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he liked that gun, too. But mm -hmm. this one's a little bigger than the Red Rider, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. This one weighs about nine pounds. Mm-hmm. So it's a nine pound nine pound rifle and um, the ammo is pretty heavy when you're lugging a bunch of it around but this gun saw action everywhere all over the world so alrighty say see ya say goodbye Bye. bye alright there's the rifle laying on the hood of the truck Again, this is an H&R, Harrington and Richardson, made in 1955. Basically, they're all made to the same spec, so they're all made to military spec. Uh, the difference on this one is, this one probably was never brought back into the arsenal, stripped down and refurbished. Um, a lot of the other war rifles, uh, once they came back from war service, were stripped down. Okay, uh, they were stripped down. Um, the broken or, or worn parts were tossed aside and uh, and thrown away, and then um, new parts were put on. So they were arsenal refinished, which means that you know they're they're mismatched parts, but uh, they're all in working order. The parts were just mismatched, and there, there you can see, uh, you can see the HRA on there, and there you can see the uh, H&R Arms Company on the side, and um, there's the H&R uh, cartouche right there on the side, uh, just below the receiver. That's the uh, this cartouche. If you look it up on the internet. Uh, this cartouche right here is uh, indicates this was the cartouche used from the last run, and there's the P cartouche 
uh, right there on the grip. Uh, this indicates that this was from the last run of uh, rifles that H and R did. So this one was was a uh, part of the last year's production. So anyway, there it is. Um, pretty nice gun. Uh, walked into the pawn shop, uh, saw it sitting there. Pawn shop that I use quite a bit, and the guys are nice guys, and they gave me a a very fair price on it. And um, so, there I have one.